Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to go over, should you buy a BMW E46 in the year 2020? Now, a lot of people ask, should I buy a BMW E46 for my first car, yada, yada, yada. Bunch of questions about what BMW to buy, should I buy one? And um, to, to start off, let me first start off by saying, um, the E46, I think is a phenomenal car. I've learned so much. If you're down to work on cars yourself, I think, it's a great car. I really enjoy this car. I enjoy the way it drives. I enjoy the inline six, but I wanted to kind of do a full video of breaking it down about everything so someone can make an educated decision should they buy an E46 in this year. So the first thing I want to talk about was cost. Now these cars are not worth a lot. I've seen in the upcut, like people are saying that they're starting to come up on the rise. I don't really see it, but I definitely think the cost, they're very inexpensive. You can buy these cars for $1,500. Yes, they're gonna need a little bit of work, but it is a BMW and um, it, it's worth it. These cars are definitely worth t spending the money to fix. I think they drive great. So you should definitely spend the money. I've seen anywhere from $1,500 um, to $2,000, even like $8,000 for some of the ZHPs. Now, yes, the ZHP is a very nice looking car. Is it worth the price? that's up to you. The horsepower is only 10 increased. I know you get the sports bumpers. That's why I'd say go for it if you really like the sports bumper. Um, that being said, definitely I wouldn't go for anything but a 330. Reason why is because the 330, you get the M54 in line six. It's the biggest engine, fastest. You get the most options in it like power everything. So definitely go for a 330 just because the cars are not expensive whatsoever right now. So might as well get the best car that is out there. I mean, obviously the M3 would be probably the most expensive one and those prices are ridiculous right now. So we're just talking about the E46 non-M and I would definitely stick with um, a 330. If you like the all wheel drive, go for the X drive. They're pretty good. If you like the coupe, I have a coupe. I personally think um, it drives a little better, handles a little better, sits a little lower, looks a little more aggressive Then go for the 330 CI. Um, so that being said, um, let's talk about mileage on the cars. Uh, some of the mileage you're going to find all the cars have higher mileage. Now the engine's great. The engine, um, is strong it can definitely the miles i wouldn't really be too concerned i have 180 on mine i've seen people rocking them with 300,000 on the engine um it's kind of up to you find out what you can um get a good deal on not necessarily too concerned with the miles because all of them are going to be around like uh 150 to 200 so definitely um I would keep that in mind about the mileage just to see maybe stuff won't need to be replaced as much. And that's the key is what's been replaced in the car or not. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is parts that need to be fixed. These cars are going to need parts. They're going to need valve cover gaskets. They're going to need um, water pumps. They're going to need um, oil filter, housing gaskets. These cars just need a lot and they're older. So they're obviously things are gonna need to be replaced. And if you're down to work on stuff yourself and you wanna learn how to work on a car, buy an E46. You will not regret it. It is a great car to learn stuff on. It is not too overly complicated to fix. Having Impa will be your friend um, if you download that after. However, if you're going to look at a car, I do suggest maybe bringing a scanner, see if there's any underlying issues that maybe you want to stay away from. I mean, like I said, nothing's too big to fix, but having something like Carly to bring with you may be a good option so you can see what's going on. And it even tells you um, about mileage, if it's in a good mileage um, bracket for what you're, for how old it is, stuff like that. So Carly could be a very good, um, Help, helping hand when going to look to purchase an E46 and I'll tell you if it has too many miles on it, if the mileage is high for its year because it compares against all the other E46s that it has scanned in its database. A couple more things going back to actually parts and purchasing things for this car. Now, like I said, um, this car is probably gonna need things fixed, just the nature of how old it is and I wouldn't be afraid of it if you wanna get your hands a little dirty. But to buy parts, I highly recommend FCP Euro. They have a lifetime warranty on all their parts, so anything on oil, windshield wipers, you buy your windshield wipers once, you're always gonna need windshield wipers, you send your old ones back, you get new ones, so, um, for free. So I definitely think FCP Euro is a great site. I will, um, yeah, I'll, I'll link it down below, but I definitely think FCP Euro is a great site to buy your parts at. Anything that's going to need replaced, valve cover gaskets, any seals, brakes, oil, anything like that. However, there are things on this car that are very expensive new still because it is a BMW. I recommend going to junkyards. I find so much stuff at the junkyard. My new trim, 
found it at the junkyard. My um, any little rivet that that's expensive, like the floor pad ones, buy it at the junkyard. I had a seal for the bottom of the door that was missing, got it at the junkyard. Even door panels, if you have a little nick in your door panel, you want to change your interior to black, buy it at the junkyard. If, as long as you are down to pull out the stuff from the junkyard yourself, it is very inexpensive. I got new door seals, and these door seals, if anyone knows how much a door seal is for an E46, they're around $400. I got two for 10 bucks, like I robbed them. They had no idea. So put you, uh, pick and pull is a great spot to find parts, and I wanted to make a video about that too for a while, about where I get some of my parts really, really cheap, the junkyard. Yeah, sometimes they have to be cleaned up, Sometimes they're broken, stuff like that, but you'll find really good stuff. I've even found really good exhaust system, B12, um, Bilstein coilovers, navigation unit, subwoofers, M Sport steering wheel. My friend Matt's steering wheel, the one with the convertible, I got his steering wheel for him for $25. An M Sport steering wheel at a junkyard for $25. Like that is the biggest come up. Everyone wants that for their E46 if it didn't come with it. I've even seen M Sport bumpers. So, junkyard is a very good place to find parts if you're looking for parts for your E46. Like I said, I highly suggest buying anything wearable brand new. Any valve cover gaskets, any seals, any like control arms, um, tie rod endings, bushings, buy that stuff new. Don't bother pulling it from the junkyard. You're wasting your time. You really are. So the next thing is, I, I talked about this earlier about going for the 330, about going for the 330, but I would try to get a newer one and I would just be mindful of um, the subframes. That can be a pretty big problem on the E46s, especially the older ones like the 99s and 2000s have a lot of subframe issues. I know in the newer ones, like the 2002s, 2003s, um, they did kind of rectify the issue, but still something to look out for if you're able to get the car in a, a lift you can put it on a lift, obviously check for oil leaks, but you can, and again, if it is leaking, not a huge deal, they're pretty easy to fix, and it most likely will be leaking, but the rear subframe is something you need to check out, because this is a very big job if it does need to be fixed, and I would say stay away from it unless you're prepared to replace the rear subframe um, where the where it bolts into. It's the actual part of the floor where it mounts, the rear subframe mounts, it, it cracks. I highly suggest looking at that if you are able to put your car up on a lift. Next thing I wanna talk about is performance and how much fun this car is to drive. Performance, I, I mean, this car isn't crazy fast, but it is sporty, it's it's fun, and I mean, I beat a lot of cars off the line, I'm not saying it's the fastest car, but it puts a smile on my face. It's Like I said, it's not an M3, it's not crazy fast, but it's pretty fast, especially because I have a coupe and it's rear wheel drive. It slides around, and it's a pretty fun car, made it with a manual transmission like I have. It's a fun driving car. I just enjoy, I just take this car out to drive. I don't even drive it places half the time. I just, I don't like, I just take it out for fun because it's just a fun driving car. The next thing I wanna talk about is how many features this car comes with. This car has so many features and so many features you can retrofit. I saw someone comment on one of my videos and it gave me a good chuckle. It said, your, it said, your 2002 BMW has more features than my 2016 Ford Fusion. And I just laughed. I just thought that was so funny. This car has so many features, the 330 spe specifically, automatic headlights, xenon lights, um, LED tail lights, power folding mirrors, um, split fold seats, Park distance control. This car has park distance control. Not, what car in 2002 had park distance control? There's so many options. Um, tire pressure monitor sensors. I have navigation. I do have an aftermarket unit, but you could get navigation factory. Heated seats, sports seats with bolsters, um, multifunction steering wheel. There's so many options that the BMW E46 has that even some newer cars don't have. So this car still has some very modern features that even some of the new cars don't even have. So I think that's a really um, awesome thing to see that this car has many modern features to not make the car feel so old. I'll give you a walk around my car in a little just so you can kind of see what it is. I do have gray interior. I suggest staying away from gray and tan. Get black. It will look the newest. It will look the cleanest. It will look the best. Just get black or if you can buy, find the natural brown or like I'm doing, I'm swapping cinnamon interior into my car from an M3. But just don't get, don't get gray. And don't get and don't get tan. It will not look good. I promise you that it will look so bad once it gets dirty, or it probably already is dirty. So please stay away. So a couple more things I'd like to talk about. I did talk about fixing the car, but just about general maintenance with the car. It's not really inexpensive. You'll need to do oil changes, um, 
replace all the filters, stuff like that, spark plugs. On the in, on the M54, it really is not bad. So I would, um, wouldn't be scared of any of the maintenance that you would have to do on the BMW E46, specifically the 330. So if you do want a coupe, I should have mentioned this earlier, they are a little harder to find, but not, not anything crazy. I would definitely still look for one if that's what you want. Don't settle for something less with an E46. Get what you want. Um, but they are a little harder to find. Um, the last thing is, before I show you around the car, buy a 330. Highly recommend the 330. I think it's a great car. I think you should buy one in 2020. I think they're a great value, fun to, fun to drive, fun to work on. I enjoy working on them. So definitely, I think you should buy a 330 with the M50. Last thing before showing you some of the features, um, definitely still check the car facts if the thing's been an accident a salvage title stuff like that don't buy one with the salvage title don't buy one that's been an accident i know it's hard to try to find some that haven't been in an accident but definitely stay away from a salvage title so now let me show you around my car so here is the inside of my car i have the sports steering wheel really nice um automatic headlights automatic headlights like i mentioned harman kardon sound system i have a navigation unit aftermarket navigation unit that i absolutely love there is a factory navigation unit that you could potentially get in the car, but if you plan on changing it, don't get it with it. It's just a little more of a little more work to switch out when you want to. Another thing, heated seats, great for when it's cold. Um, digital climate control where you can pick the individual spots. It actually shows the temperature, to regulate the temperature. Um, just a nice interior, big doors on the coupe. I have M3 seats, so I have some sports seats. Manual transmission, as I said, I have a five-speed manual transmission. Um, you can't get this car with sports steering wheel, which is nice. I mean, with um, sports seats, if you like, because it won't come with M M3 seats, uh, but you can get the car with sports seats that are kind of similar. Still have the adjustable thigh bolt, um, thigh part, and it has side bolstering, so pretty nice. Park distance control, as I mentioned, this is definitely one of the harder options to find. It is available in the US. I actually retrofitted this myself, but still something that's really nice that is available on the E46. LED taillights, as I mentioned, which are really nice, super bright. Split fold seats, you can pull the seat down right here. Again, these are all options, not every E46 has it. Now, one of the coolest options that I added, not an option in the US, but if you're in another country and looking at this or want to add it yourself, is power folding mirrors. So let me demonstrate that right now. I think that's so sick that if BMW E46 had the option for power folding mirrors, look how cool that looks. I think it looks amazing, so let's unlock it. Last thing I just wanted to show you, the engine bay. This is the famous inline six M54 engine, three, three liters. I think this engine is great. I just wanted to guys kind of show you the engine bay. Engine bay, super easy. We have the air box, oil filter right there, power steering reservoir. Um, right under here, this cover comes off two screws. You can have access to the coil packs and then the spark plugs. The battery is in the rear trunk on this car, which is actually pretty cool because you can jump in either spot. You can jump it right up there where that block is. Or you can jump it off the actual battery. I think it's really sick. You can even add Xenon. I mean, you can even add Angel Eyes, which I've added, which make the car look so good. And it has Xenon headlights, not even 20, Nine, uh, 2020 cars have xenon headlight standard some of these cheap cheaper american cars don't even have xenon standard so that is so cool that you can have xenons in a, in a 2002 car i have the clear side markers which makes it look nicer as you can see so you can definitely add that so here's my final verdict should you buy an e46 in the year 2020 Yes, you should absolutely buy an E46. Try to find a nice one just because they are pretty inexpensive and you won't have to fix as much. Because, yeah, I mean, if you want to learn, fixing stuff's nice, but sometimes it can be a pain if you're constantly fixing stuff. So that's it I have for this video. Yes, go out and find a good deal. If you guys find good ones that you're looking at, want me to take a look at, drop them in the comments below. Subscribe if you love the, if you like the E46 and want to see more E46 in general BMW content. I'm working on it. So hit that subscribe button. Like the video, 
I'd be really appreciated of that if you like this video. Com like I said, comment if you found an E46 for sale that you want to buy or just for someone else to buy. If you think it's a good deal, I'll take a look at it. But that's all I have for this video. Go out and buy an E46 if you don't have one. I absolutely love it. I think it's a great car. Drives great, runs great, easy to repair. And it'll definitely put a smile on your face. So go out and buy an E46 in the year 2020. Have a good one, guys. I'll catch you in the next one.